every goddamn time. Clock. Timer. Don't think I'm going to take an hour for this one. Welcome back to Let's Clone. My name would be Stephen French, and this is the first part or first time that we're doing the more live stream esque style. I don't know. So I'm going to give myself probably at most an hour to try to just work on some things in this little project that I'm trying to do. See what happens. If it takes more or less time, who fucking knows? We're just winging it. What I want to do here is uh, similar to old school Zelda games where uh, you're in kind of a, an instance of a dungeon and you move outside of that room into the next room, the camera then slides over to follow you and center on that new room. I want to implement that. We're just going to put a random spot in our randomly generated or procedurally generated dungeon, have that act as our door, go through that into a new room, and see if we can get this camera slide. But uh, yeah, let's go. I don't think this is going to be too hard to do. I've done things like this before. But I'm going to create a new room initially. We're going to do a, call it room, um, dungeon. I guess the other one will be world. But yeah, we'll, we'll do that one as world. The dungeon, I'm going to want to change this to a 960 by 960 because uh, I want it to be kind of like five spaces wide and high. Um, I'm gonna give it a view, let's see, 320, 320. Stretch that boy out to 640, 640. We're gonna have a camera. Um, and now I'm just gonna default it, follow the player at, uh, actually this will be a good test to see if that works the way that I think. All right, so we have a dungeon. We have nothing in it yet. I do want to clean up the system object a little bit. So create will only run once, so I guess we're fine with that. Step event, we're gonna do we're gonna do a lot of this stuff in um do I want to use the system? Yeah. Probably gonna script a lot of this. But I'm gonna switch by room, probably gonna do this in like every every event. So we have case. Uh, let's make this a bit bigger. Notice in the last video I forgot to do that. Room world. Uh, let's get a script system world step uh, system step world. Give me group system in the boy. I forgot how to label the descriptions for these things to make them all tidy and clean, but I'll figure that out later. Uh, so, yeah, this is my step event for the world, right? I'll restart the game, I'll keep that. Uh, I get, I'll, I'll figure out how that goes later on. Um, system step event world All right good we are Gucci now how do I want the system to respond in case we are in our dungeon Something similar to this boy. Uh, system step. Dungeon. I don't need this yet. Just kind of creating placeholders. Um, all right, so that's a step event. So I don't want to actually be giving myself the chance to regenerate the map. Drawing the world. It's not going to be a procedurally generated world. So this is going to have to fucking learn to do this for all of them. 
that's what I expected, but job path for all that stuffs. So then here, system. Probably shouldn't organize it all like this. I don't think that's hella efficient, but it's gonna be how it's gonna be. Uh, two W's, keeping it. Oops. So when I draw the world right now, I don't think I'm gonna need to draw anything for the dungeon. System draw world. Be opaque. Okay. That's going great. Not really quite so much there. So that's my step event, my draw event. My draw GUI for the mini map. If display mini map, I could probably. Uh, this one, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a mini map at all for the other one, so we're just going to say room is equal to room uh, world. And I'm, just gonna, I'm going to drag. Oh, shit. All right. Fuck. <laughs> Having a rough time with that. Hitting them young tildes. So I'm gonna not worry about that for drawing the GUI. Just and then my room start. This one, this one will probably need to do the switch statement. Switch room case room is equal to world. This actually goes here. And then here we're gonna do script system uh, room start world new group room start system room start world. Oh, that there, bring that there. Alright, so I think, I think we're good. Create a uh, randomized seed, choose a seed. That's only going to run once, which we're going to be in the main world, so that's fine. Hopefully I didn't break anything. So just kind of preparing the system object from here, we're going to pick a random spot on the grid, place a little door, and then go from there. Uh, that still generates, I can still toggle. Sweet. Now, room start, we're in the world room start. Get rid of this so I can see a little bit more. Drop this boy out so I can see a little bit more. I should make this recursive. So repeating, so let's see what we're doing here. So I'm setting the seed, building the grid, placing the player. Um, let's go to our sprites and give ourselves a door. Uh, give me a brown boy. Good enough for me. Now, am I setting macros? Void path. Uh, door is going to be two. Can I move these around? No, I can't. I don't like that. I was hoping that'd be cleaner. Now, here I'm walking around. I'm setting all of this stuff. To a path, then I want to. Huh. The 
this is in my room start it's a variable um, place door is equal to false while not place do I want to do it that way um, say door set so I'll not uh, door set yeah so the door hasn't been set yet I'm gonna do this code we're going to say variable door X is equal to uh, uh, random number up to what was this grid width grid size Zero to grid size, that should be fine. I don't think that's inclusive, but I don't think it'll matter because of the check we're gonna do. Door y is equal to random grid size. I'm gonna say if uh, grid at door x door y is equal to one. I don't want to place it in the middle. Here, so um, door x does not equal to grid size divided by two because this is where the player is. Um, and or y does not equal to or. I don't need it to be and, it can be or. Grid side, wow. Divide by two, okay. So that'll ensure that we're only going to try and set this if, all right, so I'm not in the middle and I am on a path, then I can say that grid uh, hashtag door x door y, we can set that equal to th two, which should be fine. That should be fine. And then if I am in my draw event, I'm setting that should be fine. Uh, we're not doing anything with drawing it onto the mini map yet. I don't want to have to hunt it down every time. Although eventually it should spawn next to us. So I guess we can just test that out a bit. <laughs> and that was in the room start. Come on now. Did I hit an infinite loop? I have. I hate that I can't just like move around anyway. Room start. So if door X, so here, oh, sh yep, yep, I hit an infinite loop. I forgot to set this default uh, to true. So if so, then door set is equal to true. So we can get out of that. <coughs> that would have just put doors everywhere eventually and never left. Okay, so I'm just going to hope that eventually we see a brown square. It's all random chance, so I, I don't like oh, Well, this this map's not not crazy. Yeah, all right, so we got one. We can't walk onto it. Um Let's change that in the player. So, oops. So why we can't walk onto it is because in the player we're checking that we can only walk onto what is a path. But if we say that it is not equal to a void, then we should be able to track it down. Ooh, that'd be fun. 
in my head thinking about things. Um, like I said, it's so it doesn't appear on the minimap, but if you've ever seen it, then it does. That could work out well. Where are you at? Where are you at? There it is. And we can go on to it. Neat. So we have that now actually in the player's step event. Um, I think I want to do the same thing. I think they're different players for you now. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do, what do we have for, or the alarm is just used for my movement. These, I guess I could build that dungeon out of grids as well. That would make sense. We're going to do it without. Mm. I'm not gonna be able to walk if all of it's a thing. All right. So yeah, I guess each dungeon can be laid out as a grid. That would make the most sense. So this walking mechanic will work just fine. So we're gonna have to build that grid for when we do a room start on our, our system event. So room start here, we got all that. Now we're gonna do uh, if room is equal to dungeon, we're going to do a room start for the dungeon, which I haven't created yet, which will be somewhat similar to here, duplicate. Um, I don't want to move that over because then it changes how much. Oh, sweet. Rename it. Wow, that is not at all correct. Rename it. Okay. Sometimes clicking doesn't work. Dungeon. Um, but, but, but I don't want to care about the seed. Uh, grid size. Um, so let's see. This is going to be 960, and each one's 32 cell. I don't feel like doing math in my head. So we've got 960. This is simple math. 30. Fine. So path x. So here we're going to say uh, make these temporary. Bid um, dungeon size. Dung size. I'm okay with it. It's 30. Probably shouldn't do this this way with a temporary variable. Um, all right, so I don't need to set a door. I don't need to set random paths. Uh, I actually don't even need a path size. I just need to set the dungeon. Um, I can set the player right in the middle. That's that's fine by me. Uh, cell size, object player, path X, path Y. I don't need to know those. Um, so repeat, I don't need to know this. Let me just do this first. I'm going to do a, um, make every cell a path for I, I is equal to, uh, oh, come on guy. I I is less than dung size <laughs> for a variable jj is equal to zero. jj is less than dung size. I will giggle every time. I think that's fantastic. I'm going to say grid. I should just be able to use the same, the same grid. I should probably be destroying it when I leave the other one, though, because I can rebuild it after. Ah. We're gonna, ah, I, we'll, ah, we'll figure that, that that later. Create no. Um, it's equal to one. No, it's equal to path. Make every cell a path. So now, every cell is a path. I'm going to create the player at. Uh, dunk size divided by two times that, dunk size divided by two. All right, so I think that works. I think when I'm in a new dungeon, that works. And then I actually do need to draw it the same way that I drew the other one. So now in my draw event, 
for this. We can actually just uh, use the same one for now. Yeah, that's fine for me. Good. So now, da, 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 da. so my step. So we need to uh, enter dungeon door. If uh, system dot grid at where's my actual x y? Those are my target x y's. I'm just setting it equal to that. And after that, I'm already set to it, so that's fine. I can use this. Um, target x, target y is equal to what did I call it? Door. Then we can go to room go to room dungeon. This is a, a potential shot in the dark. Sometimes you just you just fuck it. You just wing it. See what happens. That should put us into a big green room where we can start playing around. Fuck! What'd I do? Player step system grid is equal to door. Um, trying to index a variable which is not an array. Oh, shit. Forgot my accessor. Hopefully that's all that that error meant. Cool, so let me, yeah. This is just an easier map to peruse. Oh, I think it'll always generate there. Okay, well, something happened. Uh, system draw world, draw event. So let's see. Argument two, incorrect type undefined, expecting a number. This is in my draw line, uh, draw sprite, sprite tile. Draw that and draw world. That's my script. For drawing the world. Line 11. Draw sprite, sprite tile. Now I don't understand because that still exists. I didn't change that shit at all. What are you saying to me? Draw sprite argument to incorrect type. Undefined, expecting a number, YYG132. I don't know what that means. Uh, at Game Maker language script, script dungeon world line 11, uh, dungeon world draw world. Draw sprite, sprite tile. Now, what's wrong with that? So I'm running a draw world in, in my dungeon, which is line 11. So it's in the dungeon. I'm trying to draw the world I have. Oh, grid size. Um, maybe I should change grid size. I don't want to fuck with that, though. I mean, it's not. Yeah, we're gonna, we're, 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 we'll, give, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a good old college shot. Um, where was that supposed to be done? My room start? My dungeon room start? I'm going to say grid size because I didn't make it a. Uh, Constant. Do not need to make it a temporary. Yeah. I think that was the issue. And, and yeah, I didn't make it in the macro list um, for other reasons, but it might work out for the better. I should be destroying that other world map, though. But let's go here. We know where it is. Bang. Cool, but we're a little bit too zoomed out. So let's get into this dungeon here. Actually, we shouldn't be. I, oh, no, no, we are. I did not enable views. And oh, you get out of here. You get out of here. Where are, Where am I? Where am I? Room setting with, oh shit, no, that's right. Enable the use of views, zero, visible. Whoa, I thought I clicked on some shit. Where did I do that? Did it just not save? I mean, Y'all saw me type it. It, it. it recorded the 960. I guess not. 320 by 320. I'm doing a 640 by 640. 
Um, just follow the player for now. This is what I wanted to test with those 160, 160, because I don't know if it's going to go by the actual room scale or the port scale. So it's either going to follow and keep the player centered, or he's going to walk over to like a quarter of the screen, and then it'll follow the player. Either way, let's go there. Let's come down here. Let's get into our new room. All right. So yeah, that works. I'm. It's only moving when I get outside of the map, in which case this is telling me some shit is wrong, but I'm fine with that. I don't even know where it's referring to. Negative one, because I walked too far. Oh, because it's all a path. And okay, I, I think we're fine with that. Um, now I do, for the sake of seeing shit, we're gonna take our green grass and we're gonna make a, a darker green. I just wanna display the actual tile. Just to verify my chickens. So now I don't want the camera to actually follow the player. That's gonna change a bit. So we're gonna come here, yeah, we're in a big open room. I would like that centered on the player instead of centered on this point, but don't much matter to me. Um, get rid of you. Get rid of you, get rid of you, bring you back. Cool, so I'm gonna need a camera object. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna add some groups here. The player will eventually have some animations and shit. Um, create a group. I'm gonna actually make a system group and a system object just because. Because inside of my system, we're gonna have. Don't freeze. You son of a bitch. Why does this happen to me? It happens all the damn time. All the damn time. Now you can get get your eyes on a whole bunch of me. It's gonna have this dirty pop up and screams like, ah, oh, shit closed without us wanting it to close. Like, I didn't want it to close either. You don't gotta tell me. It's almost at least once every session. I never set my timer, did I? Like, I, I don't think this one's gonna take an hour, but I was supposed to at least try. So here, we're gonna assume that like, what, 45 minutes have gone by? Not 45, 15. So we're gonna, we're gonna set the timer for 45 more than minutes. There it is. All this shit, something happened, I don't understand it. I could probably read through it and figure it out, but I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna keep dealing with it. What was I trying to do? Camera. Objects. Oh, cool. Actually, got that far. Oh, now I don't know where this was. So it's not going to line up with my face anymore. Object camera. Uh, whoops. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. And I think it's pretty neat how uh, I have to follow another tutorial. We're gonna we're gonna try it this way just because this one's pretty simple, pretty easy to, to understand. Sprite camera. We're gonna make this boy the size that we need it to be. So 320, 320. Um, for now, it's going to be. Okay, I, I don't. Yeah, we're just gonna make a, a white box. And I can't really see. It doesn't actually need to have a graphic to it. Wow. But we're going to just for now. Actually, I don't think it needs to have a graphic to it because I this is a cell that I learned in CodeHot. Um, we're gonna we're gonna test it. So we're gonna do full image. Middle center, I think, middle center, yeah. We're going to, in our room, so what, what do we have here? We've got 
This is a 960 by 960, so that's 4, 480. And we're going to create, uh, should create another, another layer. Would be down here. Camera. I don't want. Why am I looking there? Object camera. Give this boy what he needs. Back into my dungeon. Why didn't you save what I wanted you to do, man? Like this wasn't on accident. I typed all the numbers in on purpose. I take the camera and wow, why are you okay? Yeah, Game Maker just does some silly shit. So we're gonna just set the no, not creation code. We don't need that. Let's get out of here. We're gonna set the camera stuffs. We're gonna set the camera locked onto the camera object. Um, we're gonna actually give it a, a regular speed. Now, what I want to do is in my camera object, we're gonna give it a, it should know it's, it's width, so I shouldn't have to do that. So step here, we're going to follow player. We're gonna say if not place meeting meeting at x y object player. So if we are not touching the player, then we need to check what direction the player has left. Um, wow! Somebody's. Off. It's gonna be loud on my shot. Ugh. player can only move 32 pixels at a time, so I can check in each of those. Uh, that's just easy. I don't want to do much thinking at the moment. If place meeting at x plus 32, y object player is true, and we're just going to test it to the right, then we're going to say x plus equals to sprite width. Let's see if that works. So if the player is not touching this collision box that we just made, then we need to move that over somewhere else. And then the camera is going to try to keep up with that object. So we can come down here. I can't move my player. My, well not frozen. Okay. Let's see where it is in this. I don't want to do that. I don't get it. Oh, I do get it. It's just not working. Why am I not drawing the camera? because the camera's probably behind. We're gonna put that in front. I should at least see that, that inner white square. All right, so we got that. I hate it. Now why isn't the camera fan on that. I'm in my dungeon. Visible. Enable viewport. Is that was that the problem? This camera should shouldn't be following me. But why is the camera following me? Object camera. Get this back to negative 
everyone. Uh, did I actually set a different one? I'm gonna get rid of get rid of you. I don't want you. Oh, so I had set this. Weird. I didn't. I never meant to set viewport one. I meant to set viewport zero. Let me just make sure I didn't set any others. Okay. That should be the problem. Now it should be set to the camera. It should be centered over the camera. All right. Then if I go over, we do that. Now it went instantaneously because of this. Now we're only checking if we're moving to the right. So we're going to have to obviously go back and adjust that. Can you hear that laptop wrapping up? I forgot to set it by default to be over that boy. And then it's going to pan over. So that's a little bit slow. Let's go by four by four. Let's set the initial coordinates of a uh, I thought I made it a little bit bigger. We can do that. You can come out. Three. Oh, I guess I just did it by three. I was supposed to do it by five. Um, but if I want to move it over 360, 360. Uh, why? Oh, 320. So now it'll start on the player, we'll go over, we'll zoom around. Now we're going to have to build a bit of a template for the grid. This could be neat or interesting or frustrating. Right, but we've got this. We obviously can't do that. Um, let's go into our script our system, our room start, where we start the dungeon. From here, I set everything to path, but I do want to set the perimeter to zeros. Uh, oh, that's simple enough. Out by one, one, minus two, minus two. Now I'm just gonna set everything on the inside to a path. Might have, might have only had to do minus one. We'll find out. Yeah, minus one would have been ideal, but I can't go over. Now it doesn't do anything if I am too low. Get rid of you, get rid of you. Camera. Uh, so just check right. Else if we're left, right, up, left, and down, up, minus 32, y minus equals sprite. Sprite with and height are the same. Um, this be left. Minus down y plus. All right, so now we should have omnidirectional camera travel. Okay, so we're in this dungeon, we go boom. Now we can go scale up. Can't go outside of the dungeon. Scale left, on the edge. Scale left, scale left. Oh, I didn't set that to minus one. And then this will be the same problem. Cool, 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 cool tools. Um, how do I want to do this? I want to kind of generate it, but 
procedurally ish. I could do a few different things. I want to build. I could do this in the next part. Ah, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Let's just first get into building our dungeon, making this minus one. So that's correct. I guess that was the point of this one, is just to get that much done. Let's find it in the other maps. I think I'll, I'll do it for this one. I'll, I'll draw the the door on the mini maps and then explain where I kind of want to go with this. Uh, we already did that one. I think this is up on the top left, but I don't know if that is. And then here, we're touching here, we're touching. I have fixed all the walls. Bingo, bango, zingo, zango. Didn't go too far, but that's fine. Um, now, I can do a couple things. Now, we're going to stick with what I wanted. So, in my draw, so actually, the draw GUI, we do have to upgrade, update. So we just did it here. So we need to do switch room, uh, create a group in this group for GUI, script, script system, draw graphic user interface. No, I don't. I actually don't know if I needed to do this. But we're gonna do it. Uh, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. So case. Room, world, break. I draw system draw mini map world. I guess it will be a little bit different between the mini maps. And then script system. Draw GUI world, but in the world, nope. This is why I plugged in my mouse here. So we're drawing the player, we're drawing the camera box, but in between the two, I want to draw door. Um, nope, I don't want to do that here because I can do that. Up here. So we're doing it. If I'm green, I'm drawing green. That's the only one I need to know. So draw path, draw door, door, brown. Is there no brown? Why is there no brown? Oh, this is a fun time to play with this. So here in variable definitions, you can create, I'm gonna actually name it, see brown, you can create a color. And on this color, you can make brown. So now see brown works. Give it a second. You know, since it's my color, I'm going to capitalize it so I don't get too confused. Be blue. There we go. You are not on the reference ones. No, you're not. You're set and you're referenced. Why are you still telling me this? Now, 
I want to draw the door, but I only want to draw it after we've seen the door. So we're going to do that next. I just want to make sure that it's actually drawing it accordingly. All right, so it says that my room is down there. Come down here. There it is. Um, it's in the correct spot on this map. And this boy is kind of hard to find. I'm drawing by the mini map, not by the actual map. Ah, shit. And then we've got our little dungeon. This one's easiest. I just want to see where the player is relative to the middle, because we're not in the middle. Oh, I think I was still pressing over. Yeah, middle would be half spaced out, and I'm, I'm not worried about that. OK. I think that's actually pretty good. What I want to do in the next part is I want these dungeons to be kind of like Zelda, where these are all walled in, except for a gap on the sides and then you use that doorway to kind of access your, your direction. Um, but I think what I want to do is I want to build a map editor. I think that'd be fun. A little like map generator where you can kind of create your own DS grid uh, through like a little Mario Maker type and then build your map out of that. I think that would be neat. Um, I've done similar things before. I think I could figure it out. That one could take over an hour. So we're going to probably going to do a lot of planning. I might even test that one out and then code it out. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm satisfied. Room two. That's actually not the window behind me, um, but I'm OK with it. OK, so didn't quite take an hour to do this one. Uh, it's just where I want to go next, as I just kind of rambled in my brain is going to take quite a bit of time so I think that'll be a whole part of its own. This is kind of fun. We've got a random gen or a random pop-up of a door but it's not randomized so it's just static for each of the maps. But we've got a little spot where we can put a door, we can hit the door, we can go into a new room and we have a camera that follows us with that Zelda-like scroll and that was my intention. So yeah, kind of got that one knocked out. Thank you for watching. This is Les Clone. I'm Stephen French.